Hey YouTube, if you're anything like me, you've got a lot of stuff that has rechargeable batteries. And more and more lithium chemistries of various kinds are becoming very popular for their charge density and their current drain profile. This guy right here, this is the uh, 18650, if you look it up by part number, is one of the more popular sizes. Uh, this actually is a pretty, pretty big battery. This is 3.7 volts and 3,400 milliamp hours, 3.4 amp hours in this one package that is, you know, 25, 30% bigger than a, than a double A that doesn't have half of that capacity. And the prices of these things have become much more reasonable in recent years. This particular battery uh, still runs about 10 bucks on Amazon, but that is because it is one of the highest capacity 18650s you can buy from an actual brand name. This is the Panasonic slash NCR version. So I happen to think it actually is 3,400 milliamp hours. But they can be had in two packs, four packs, and huge bulk packs for considerably less money per battery, uh, especially if you don't need the absolute maximum capacity. If, if you're happy with somewhere in the 2,700 to 3,000 milliamp hour range, you can get these things for two or three bucks each. Now, in my case, the device to be powered in question is this little guy. This is an Elcraft KX2 transceiver. What does that mean? It's a radio. Uh, this particular one is for use on amateur radio. If you check some of the other videos, you'll see I am a licensed amateur radio operator. Uh, and this guy transmits on what we call the HF, or high frequency bands, which ironically are the low frequency bands in the spectrum. Uh, anyway, that is a great place to do round the world communications, and it actually doesn't take a lot of power. In general, I run five watts out of this radio. That means it'll run a long time on a battery charge. And in fact, it'll run so long on such a reasonably sized battery that Elecraft did what, to my knowledge, no one else has done to date, and actually put a battery in this radio. Let's dig it out. To get at the battery, you loosen two thumb screws on either side, flip the back over, and inside, voila, one battery pack. Now, if you look at this battery pack, you'll see it says right on the front, lithium ion 18650. Yep, this pack is made up of these cells, exactly the same size, shape, everything. The only other thing in here, other than three of these batteries, is a tiny, tiny little printed circuit board that makes sure that this thing doesn't get overcharged and uh, kind of protects it a little bit from short circuits and just makes it uh, a little bit safer than three raw batteries. That all sounds okay. What's the problem? You can't charge this battery inside the radio. You have to open it up, take it out, and plug it into the supplied charger, which, oh, by the way, the supplied charger is 110 volt only. You have to have AC mains power available to you in order to charge the battery after you take it out of the radio. The other problem is the cost. This set of three of these, and remember I've got the best ones you can buy and I've got $30 tied up in three of them. This thing is double that. This is $60. And this battery pack is only 2,600 milliamp hours. Double the price is kind of steep to pay for a whole lot less capacity uh, just to get that one chip. So basically, I want to minimize the use of this battery. I, I only want to rely on this battery when I need to be in some sort of ultra portable scenario, uh, like I'm going to take this thing on the back of a motorcycle or something like that, and I want absolutely the smallest number of pieces, then this is the perfect battery. Until that time, I want to keep this thing charged and not take it in and out a lot and not cycle it. So the battery's back in there, what are my options? Well, they start here. This is a straight up DC power cable. It's a five and a half millimeter outside diameter, 2.1 inside, I think, that plugs right here into the side of said radio. And it's amazing how many battery operated devices don't include an external power input. Fortunately, this one did. The other end of my wire terminates in Anderson power poles. This is kind of a standard thing that uh, hams and lots of other people use for power connections. There's a particular arrangement on the end of here that allows it to plug into almost any power supply I would walk up to, or anybody else's battery pack or uh, generator, whatever. These power poles are pretty universal in the ham radio community. And so this lets me get my KX2 powered from just about any power source that's out there. 
assuming there's a power source out there. For the times when there is no power source, I invested in this. This is a cheap plastic holder for three of these. They just pop in, voila. The fully populated with three batteries, this is almost the same size, shape, and weight. Not quite, it won't actually fit inside the radio, but it's functionally equivalent to the battery that's in there, with the exception of it doesn't have the protection chip for charging, and it has about 50% more capacity. So the plan is simple. Take this $5 Amazon item, load it up with three of these $10 Amazon items, slap some power poles on the end of it, and for somewhere under 40 bucks, I'm gonna have a second battery pack for my KX2 that has 50% more capacity than the original and has batteries which come out individually. Why do I care about that? Because chargers for the individual batteries are everywhere and dirt cheap. And in fact, I already had this charger and one of these batteries for a gimbal for the cell phone for shooting video. So by using this arrangement, I only need to make one of these battery packs and I can keep as many of these 18650 batteries as I want. I can charge them up in a charger that frankly is even more intelligent, I think, than the arrangement that comes from Elecraft. And it runs off 110 volt AC and 12 volt DC. So I can charge these things anywhere I happen to be as long as I have a vehicle or a solar setup or wind or something that can generate 12 volts. A lot more options there than having to have the AC mains. Okay, I'm gonna take just a minute. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the power poles on the end of this thing. Now, one thing that is pretty critical if you want these to be as handy as they're supposed to be is that you get them connected together in the right order. You'll notice here in the bag, the reds and the blacks are all just loose, but they've got ridges on the side that let you stick them together into these multi-prong connectors. For ham radio power applications, the proper way to gang these two things together is that you hold them so that you can read the little A that's on the, on the tab on the front. And when you're holding them so that you can read them, red goes on the right. So you can read it, red, right. It's the three R's of getting your power poles correct. All right, so I'm just gonna uh, size these wires up a little bit here. I'm gonna make them pretty short. I don't want a whole lot of extra slack when uh, I ultimately epoxy this to the side of the case. Um, and also, the KX2 doesn't draw a lot of power, uh, but when you key it up, it'll draw an amp or two. And the wires on these cheap battery packs are pretty thin, so shorter is better. A lot of people in this world will poo-poo and pshaw at uh, crimp connectors, but I am not one of them. The reality is that a properly crimped connector is at least as strong as a soldered one. And in some cases, it may actually end up stronger because when you solder these things, the solder wicks down into the wire and makes it stiff in places that it wasn't supposed to be stiff. And that can actually represent a break point. That is not going anywhere and it's exactly as flexible as it always was. Okay, power pole scrimped, we move on to assembly. These things go in, you put the little part with the A on it facing down and then the tab with the curve of the tab going down and it just slides in and eventually it will click. Now I have never, with a thin wire, been able to do this without getting a little screwdriver on the back of the power pole and giving it a shove. Once you do that, it seats right in, no problem. Okay, with the pack all assembled, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that I do not have any continuity between these poles. I do not want a short circuit in here when I go sticking three high capacity lithium batteries in. Always, always, always remember, there's a lot of power in one of these things and a kind of an unstable chemistry. So it's a bad combination to get wrong. Let's get them loaded up. Get the meter back over here on 20 volts DC and see what our power poles have to say. 12.54 volts DC. That's perfect. Um, that actually is slightly higher than what the built-in battery comes up when you fully charge that thing and you stick it in the radio, it reports 12.1, 12.2, something like that for a voltage. So 12.5 is definitely at least as much charge uh, plus the much higher capacity batteries. Only thing left to do now is hook the radio up and see if it likes it. 
Okay, if we look at the KX2 right now, it says 11.7 volts. Uh, that's its measurement of the voltage of the internal battery under load, just receiving load. I don't even have an antenna hooked up at the moment, but that's where we are with a, an almost freshly charged internal battery from the get-go. Let's, uh, I got my power poles connected here. Let's plug in the other end of this wire and see what the KX2 thinks this battery pack is. 11.9 volts. So that to me is ideal. And I would expect it. We've got three batteries of the same chemistry feeding the same radio. The measurement circuitry in there should come up with about the same idea of what the, what the voltage is. That it differs from what the multimeter shows me doesn't bother me in the slightest because now our batteries are under load, whereas the meter, not so much. Plus, Harbor Freight meter, so who knows. So there you go. A 3,400 milliamp hour battery pack for the KX2, where the batteries are individually replaceable and chargeable by both wall and automotive current. Now, is this the ideal solution for this? I don't know. It works for me, largely because I had some of the pieces, um, and it's cheap. And those are both things that I like. Some folks may really, really want that uh, official battery pack and be looking for a solution to charge that on the go. Those things are uh, apparently in the works. And um, not everybody is going to be up for buying like the highest capacity batteries they can find. I, honestly, you can cut the price of this about in half if you go with a capacity similar to what's in the radio already. Um, and honestly, that capacity is pretty good. If you're operating QRP, you get hours out of that battery. So uh, don't think that these $10 guys are a, are a must for this application. It's good timing for this project. I'm headed out on a camping trip over the 4th of July weekend. I won't see you before the holiday, so uh, happy Independence Day. Try not to blow yourselves up. I need every member of the audience I can get. Questions or comments, leave them down below. And in the meantime, especially with those fireworks and lithium batteries, and soldering and whatever else you're going to do, stay safe, you two.